praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. A day we've never seen before and a day we'll never see again. As always, we believe it is a day to praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Welcome everyone to the God in the midst. G-I-T-M radio. Hallelujah. Get them radio. This is your Sunday school lesson edition and I am your host and teacher, Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest E Church in Harvest, Alabama. We'll be looking at our lesson today from Genesis, Genesis chapter 22, starting at verses 1 through 3 and then going to 6 through 14. So if you will, turn your Bible to Genesis chapter 22. And uh, let's go now to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for allowing us to see another one of your beautiful days. Yes, Lord, we truly believe this is a day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in you. We thank you this Lord, Lord, day, Lord, for waking us up this morning, giving us a reasonable portion of health and strength. We ask you, dear Heavenly Father, to just, just be with us this day. Be true to your word. Where two or three are gathered in your name, you said you would be in the midst of us, Lord. Have your way. You are our God. You are our provider. You are everything that we need, dear Lord, and we thank you for it right now in the name of Jesus. Bless now that somebody might be encouraged no matter what they're going through. Touch now, dear Lord, that someone might be strengthened even where they're weak, dear Lord. And then, Lord, we just ask that this word go out that somebody might even give their lives to you and accept you as their Lord and Savior. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Uh, as I said earlier, the lesson today comes from Genesis chapter 22. Genesis chapter 22. And we're going to start reading at verse 1. Genesis chapter 22, starting at verse 1. And it reads, Now it came to pass, and I'm reading out of a New King James Version of the Bible. Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. And then he said, take you, now your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains in which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning and and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac, his son, and he split the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place in which God had told him. Now, now the lesson skips down to verse six, but I'm going to read verses four or five. So then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place Afar off, and Abraham said to his young young men, "Stay here with the donkey, the lad, and I will go up a yonder and worship, and and we we'll, and we will come back to you." So Abraham, verse six, took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac his son, and he took the 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 fire in his hand and. And, and a knife, and the two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. Then he said, Look, the fire and the wood, but, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. Then they came to the place which God had told him. And Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order. And he bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, here am I. And he said, do not lay your hand on the lad 
or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked and there behind him was a ram caught in the thicket by its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called that place Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, in the mountain of the Lord shall be provided. In the mountain of the Lord, it shall be provided. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I've read for you. Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 down to 14. The title of today's lesson is dealing with the Lord will provide. The Lord will provide. And, and you know, and it's, it's one of those lessons that, that, that we, we've heard over and over again in Sunday school. And it's always good to hear it again. We've heard it in sermons and things of that nature. But, but, but we need to always understand when God has a message and we hear it over and over again. It's something, every time we hear it, it's something that we're supposed to get out of it. In this lesson, the Lord will provide. The Lord will provide. Our key verse is verse, 20, 20, uh, verse 8. And verse 8, and, and verse 8, and verse 8 says, So Abraham, oh, hold on, where we go? So Abraham said, My son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. God will provide for himself the lamb of the burnt offering. Yes, yeah, yeah. The Lord will provide. He, he will provide. Whatever we stand in the need of, he will provide. The key concept for this lesson is God will provide for us in every situation we in. It doesn't matter what that situation is. God will will provide. And so as we look at this text and we, 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 we want to examine it, the keys for kids for this text is Abraham trusted and obeyed God. Secondly, God kept his promise and provided for Abraham. And what we can do today is we can understand that we can trust God to provide for us today. Oh, hallelujah. That's good for us to know that God will provide for us still today. And so as we look at this text, we, we, we can look at it from the background. Every, you know, Abraham uh, and Sarah uh, left their homeland with the promise that they had heard from God and God let them know ain't nothing impossible for them. So they had a child in their old age. They tried to intervene themselves and had Ishmael with, with one of uh, 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 Sarah's uh, handmaidens, but, but God had other plans. He wanted an Isaac to be born and God told him that Isaac was going to be born and, and here it came to pass. And Isaac name means to laugh. To laugh, laugh, cause, cause, cause Sarah laughed at God when he told her that she was going to have a child. And all of this now has come to pass. The child, Isaac, has, has grown now, and, and, and he's the promise, and, and they love this child. But now God wants to test Abraham. Oh, mercy. Somebody ought to holler, it's only a test. There are times in our lives where we are going to be tested. When we were in school, you, you had a test, you had a pop quiz, you had things that you had to study for and prepare for. And, and those were tests. Those were, were tests to, to see where you were. And, 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 and if you failed the test, you had to take the test again so that you could get a better grade. And, and here it is, here it is. God is at a point where he's getting ready to send Abraham through a spiritual test. A spiritual test. And, and this spiritual test, God already knows how Abraham is going to come out of this. God already knows that Abraham is going to pass this. 
But, but the test still has to happen because God tests us so that we might know where we are in him so that he can, just like when you take your finals in college, you get your degree, you're going to another level. God wants to take us to another level. And he wants us to have the confidence and the trust in him and then that obedience in which we need. So here it is. He's now being tested. And it says that God told him in verse 1 and 20, verse 22, verse 1, God said to him, and now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, he said, and he says, here am I. I'm right here, God. I'm listening to you. He said in verse 2, then God said, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains which I shall tell you. Go to the mountain of vision. That's what Moriah is. Go to the place where there is a vision. I got a vision for you there. And, and I want you to go and offer up your only son. Oh, man, that's, that's a test. They, they had waited 20-some years for, to have this child after God had promised them. And in their old age, and now God is testing Abraham and saying, go sacrifice that which I promised you. Go sacrifice that which I gave you. Oh, I, I'm talking to somebody right now. God has made a promise to you. God, God has even came through in that promise, but now he's testing you to see if you would give that promise back to him. Will you trust him with it or do you want to control it all yourself? Oh, I'm talking to somebody. Maybe, maybe it's your ministry. Maybe it's your church. Maybe it's your husband, your wife. Maybe it's your children. Are you confident enough? That what God has promised you, that you can give that which he had already promised you and gave you back to him and put it in his hands. Mm. And knowing that everything will be all right, that God got this. Are you at that point where you can stand that kind of test? And so Abraham Obey God, because that's, that's what God wants. He wants us to obey him. We, we, he wants us to trust him. He wants us to, to know that he is going to provide everything that we need, and all we have to do is trust. Just trust him, because he got it. Oh, hallelujah. So here it is. Abraham now, here's what God says. And he goes and he obeys God. So Abraham rose early in that morning, saddled his donkey, took two of his young men with him, Isaac, his son, and, and the split wood for the burnt offering and rose and went to the place which God had told him. And Abraham gathered all the items. Abraham packed his donkey. Abraham took his son along. He, he did what God had told him to do. He trusted God. He obeyed God. But he was still dealing with this test. It's a test. It's a test so, so that we can understand that God can be trusted. The question is, are we going to be obedient? Mm. Are we going to follow through? Are we going to do what God told us to do? Are we going to do it reluctantly? Are we going to do it in faith? Are, are we going to do it begrudgingly? And in anger, are we going to do it cheerfully? 
Abraham trusted God. Abraham obeyed God. Even though he truly did not understand what God was asking him to do. He trusted him with what little he knew. And so they, they didn't put this part in the, in the written text for the Sunday school, but I never can pass up verses four and five. It says, and then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off and Abraham said to his young men stay here with the donkeys the lad and I will go yonder and worship and we'll come back to you this this is words coming out of his mouth he 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 he, he saw the vision that God had, had said that he was going to have he had to wait a while he had to wait three days to see the place where God wanted this sacrifice to occur and then while he was waiting, God gave him a vision. Oh, yeah. When you, when you trust God, when you obey God, he will give you a provision. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Sister Patrice, for a provision, a, a vision of what God wants you to do. He will provide everything you need. Hallelujah. And so, here it is now. Abraham then said, I'm going up to worship. Told his servants, y'all stay here. We'll be back. He didn't say, I'll be back. He, he said, we'll be back. He was trusting God. He, he spoke those things that are not as though they are. He was trusting God. Oh, hallelujah. So now, Verse 6, so Abraham took the wood and the burnt offering and, and the lad and, 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 and laid it on Isaac, his son. And he took the fire in his hand and, and a knife and the two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, my father. And he said, here I am, my son. Then he said, look the fire and the wood, but where's the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, my son, God will provide for himself, the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. So as they were walking up the mountain, talking, Isaac noticed that something was missing. Isaac said, wait, wait a minute now. We, we got the wood. We, we got the fire. We got the knife. We got the ropes. Something, something, something. Something is missing. And he says, Daddy. What's, wait a minute. We got all of this. Where is the burnt offering? And, and Abraham said, my son, God will provide. Oh, hallelujah. When, when things are missing in our lives, when, when things are, are out of place, when things don't seem right, we need to trust that God will uh, provide. He will provide. He will provide. And so Abraham, he responded to his son with, 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 with this, this confidence in God and, and this trust in God. And he, he said, my son, God will provide for himself the lamb for this burnt offering. God will provide. I know he will. And so... They went on up together. Now we at verse 9. And while they're there, they came to the place in which God had told him. And Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order. And he bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Now let's stop right here. I've always had, had a, a problem with this verse. Abraham is an old man. 
but yet he bounded his son and laid him on the altar. Oh, you got to hear something here. The reason I have a problem with this because I, I figured the child would be like struggling and trying to get away, but, but, but no. Isaac is, 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 is a foretelling of Jesus. He was obedient even to the point of death. That's what Jesus did when he laid down his life on the cross. And Isaac laid down his life in obedience to his father. Oftentimes when we talk about this text, we only look at the faith of Abraham. But, but look at the obedience of Abraham and Isaac. Mm. Mm. The son was obedient. Thank goodness we have a son, God's only begotten son, that was obedient even to the point of death. Oh, praise God. Because if he, if he, if he didn't want to do it, oh, mercy, where would we be? That's when, when I think about how Jesus said in the garden, oh, Father, let this bitter cup pass me by. But nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Mm. Abraham prepared the altar in obedience. And now he's placed his son on the altar. And Abraham stretched out his hands and took the knife to slay his son. Oh, hallelujah. God may not come when you want him to. But he's always right on time. The angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, here I am I. And he said, don't lay your hand on that lad. Do not do anything to him. For now I know you fear God since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. Is your faith strong enough? Is your faith strong enough to trust God to work out your difficulties? Do you trust him enough to work out your circumstance and your situation, no matter how bad it is? Do you understand God got you? Mm. Oh, hallelujah. God told Abraham, wait a minute, man, stop. Don't do that. I, I got this. I got this. And because you, you were ready to do this, now I know that you have a true fear, reverence, and trust for God. God already knew. But now, Abraham knew himself that he truly trusted God. Oh, hallelujah. This, 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 this is so, so awesome. Abraham, when he lifts up his hands like that to, to do this, and, 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 and it's, it's very, very difficult situation. And, and Abraham still feared God. He demonstrated his respect and his reverence for God. And he passed the test. Oh, hallelujah. Because if you don't pass the test, you won't have a testimony. There must be a test in order for you to have a testimony. And listen to the testimony that, that Abraham has after, after he says that, then Abraham looked lifted his eyes and looked and there behind him was a ram caught in the thicket caught in the bushes by his horn so Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son and Abraham called that place Jehovah Jireh the Lord will provide without a test oh hallelujah 
you, you can't have a testimony. God provided a substitute. God provided a ram in the bush. God provided a way out of no way. Oh, I'm saying something to us. We all deserve the penalty of sin. All have sinned and fallen short of the God of God and the wages of sin is death and we all deserve that penalty. But, but God provided a ram in the bush. His only begotten son, Jesus the Christ, died on the cross for our sins and God raised him from the dead that we might have life and have life everlasting. And we put our faith in him. We're showing that we trust him, that we depend on him. No matter what, we understand that he's Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. God will help us through this. Oh, hallelujah. What a word today. God will work it out. Songwriter says, Jesus will work it out. He'll work it out. I tell you, he'll work it out. We have to trust him and obey him. Oh, hallelujah. We must remember that not every difficult experience in life is necessarily a personal spiritual test from God. Of course, any experience could become a test or a temptation, depending on how we deal with it. Sometimes, sometimes our own disobedience causes pain or disappointment. But we got to learn to distinguish between trials and temptations. Trials come from, from our own, I mean, temptations come from our own desires within us. While trials come from the Lord who has a special purpose that he's trying to fulfill in our lives. Temptations are, are used by the devil to bring us out the worst in it. But God allows trials to come in us that the Holy Spirit might work in us to bring out the best in us. So the temptations that we have, we... They, they, they just seem logical, but, but the trials always seem very unreasonable. What am I saying to you? If you're going through a trial now, God's going to work it out. If the devil is tempting you, God has already provided a way of escape. Because he that is in you is greater than he that is in this world. So it doesn't matter if it's, a time, if it's a trial, if it's a temptation. God got you. It's only a test that you might have a testimony. A life of faith. A life of faith that God is calling us to is not an easy one. Like Abraham, you and I may be called to make some Hard wrenching decisions. But like Abraham, we can fix our confidence securely on God. That God will make a way. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is the God that will provide. Let us pray. Mighty God, Father, we trust in your strength alone. When we're weak, that's when you are most strong. Our best plans always seem to fail, but give us courage to put our faith in you alone. And we ask this in Jesus' name. We trust you, God. Amen. God will provide. Not always in ways we expect, but he is Jehovah Jireh. As we close this recording, on Facebook Live and go to the conference calls to have 
discussions upon the lesson. If you want to join us on the conference call, the number is 619-639-4733. That's Gidham Radio, 619-639-4733. Um, but before we close this broadcast on Facebook, we always like to go to the Lord in prayer. For a prayer and pray the prayer of salvation. So please pray this prayer after me. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sins and was buried, and that you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus, to become the Lord of my life, to rule and to reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. If you prayed that prayer, I truly believe you are saved because God's word says so and promises. Be blessed on Facebook, and if you, like I say, you want to join us in the discussion of this lesson, Call 619-639-4733. Be blessed.